Sunday morning, northwest wind, Lorelei and Victoria. Yeah, we start them young against the best. Beautiful day, Kylie in August, heading into the race committee boat over here. We don't get to reach very much, so this is kind of good. We overstood the committee boat, so they're having to come in on a tight reach, and they'll do this today, you guys. We don't reach a lot, so you got to practice it a lot. This is where you can gain a line. Yeah, and the crew cannot look down. The crew just has to have that thing as loose as you can get it without luffing. They're, they're a little high of the race committee boat now, but not a problem. Yeah, this looks good. See, I'm going to say I have a twist. That's causing a loss of power, though. And I'm not going to tell them because they might, you know, this is like... They don't have a ton of reefing strength, but that's a loss of power. You need bang on on the reef to just close that twist off. This is a Bella and Vesper again, Sabbat sailor, a B leader and an A leader. And uh, we have the kids mix up quite a bit at the tier three level, you know, the development level. We kind of skip the FJ stepping stone process. We use FJs to train them up non spinnaker sometimes. But we just get them in the 420 and put them against really good sailors right away. We try to build their resiliency in Sabbaths first. Sabbaths are the school of hard knocks if you haven't experienced it before. They're very difficult boats to sail, but they make you really good when you're good at them. And that's why we can have 12 and 13 year olds out here with 16 year olds. Okay, so it's Sunday. We're getting ready for race one, force four is a triangle windward lure. So that'll be good. A lot, of the, a lot of these kids in this fleet are good reachers, but you're going to see people struggling on the reaches because we do so much when we're lured in our culture. This sausage drill phenomenon that we've been having for the last 35 years or whatever, 30 years, where we do when we're lures with kids ad nauseum. So half the kids quit. Anyway, don't get me started. Uh, but we do a lot of reaching. We train all of our kids a lot on reaching. We do a lot of reaching the funnest point of sale. So we do a lot of it. Here we go. Look at this, 12-year-old. Lorelei. They won the tier two kind of luffing regatta recently. She's like the snipe crew du jour. She's, she, I mean, people have like begged to have her. It's very likely that we're gonna have, very likely that we're gonna have a recall. Here's the Borellis. When people skull next to you, you gotta. When people skull next to you, you gotta tell them, "Hey, stop skulling! Stop skulling!" Yeah, that was a good job. She just didn't say a word to him. She just, she's just fighting for height to get away from six six two five. Now you speed test for a little while. Don't go back until you see the flag, though. You keep racing until you, you on somebody on your boat sees the general recall flag. Do not just go by the sound signal. That was really beautiful. Just squeeze that guy off, and then they get into mode. They were in high mode, just surviving. Cool, northwest wind today. This should be really nice for a while, and then at, you know, what time is it gonna back off? Are we gonna be on our way in at three? And it backs off then, we don't know. The current is going up the course. So this is, you know, we've got, we've got, uh, uh, low tide is at two o'clock. So this is gonna get hard to get these starts off. He's going to one day. I grew up right on that. Right in that center right there. Yeah, very lucky, very lucky childhood. Did a lot of boat, a lot of boat stuff out here. Now, the problem with Northwest is that puts you in the, the lee of the Naval Amphibious Base on the left. So the wind gets streakier. The wind gets steadier as we go here, but the bay widens from the narrow, one of the narrowest parts of the bay up there, two miles, and uh, and then also gets much wider. So the the wind fans out, uh, and as it fans around the amphib base, it gives you a more tack header at some point. And so northwest wind complicates things. So the less risky side is the right. The current is going up the course, so that means you have to account for that. We're trying to find somebody here. I don't see a ton of people up here that are in the top of the fleet other than Ben and Braden here. Yeah, our youngest teams are hanging out. 
This is one of our youngest teams, 0-0 here, hanging out at the committee boat. Raiden, good job. Raiden's not going to come in at the boat. Uh, too far into the boat with the current going up. He's doing a good job of looking behind him, making sure he's not going to have a problem. Now he's just going to stick it. He's just sticking it. And what he should be doing is there's a person up there looking at down the line, and he should be looking at her. And he can read the line by looking at her line of sight. Yep, there's Ben. See that? Ben, ben just told him you're going a little too... Oh, here's Kevin right here, too. So, uh, boat five's in third in the regatta. 9307 is in sixth in the regatta, maybe fifth. They, they, he does not have a throw out yet. He does have a throw out. Oh, man. Oh. General. We got about nine knots here where I am, maybe ten knots up the course. That guy's not lifted on that cruiser there. So we're racing for the right middle. There's the weather mark up there lined up with kind of there's a bright white boat up there on the right edge of the Coronado Bridge, and the weather mark is right off the, just to the left of the bow of a white power boat. One minute to go with a black flag. So this is DSQ if you get over early in the last minute. We got 9310 doing a much better job, Loki and Zach. Man, 95 again. That guy, he, he'll be on Port Tack right in front of people and then have to skull like a big dog. Yeah. The current's going out. Dana Point boat down here, not going to make it. They're too early. He should bail out now, and I don't know if he knows it's a black flag. Yeah, the line side is this guy. Oh, Jordan Janoff, the guy leading the regatta. 3307, second in the regatta. They just got you flagged. But no, they just got black flagged. 9325, really good in the regatta. Just got black flagged. Yep. Wow. I can't believe that. Oh, serious? Wow. Cool. Super cool. Look at that. She's hand trapping, dude. She got trained in hand trapping. So she's getting there. She's trapping a few months. Look at them. They both like to hang on. <laughs> Alright, they got enough hang on. Look at their sail. Bella and Vesper. This looks really good. Yeah, leech the jibs out, but you know, that probably is okay. I mean, they're, they're beating 10 or 12 months. We are talking about some teams that are 220 together, 215 together. Sailing a good solid 12 knots. So Borelli's are working hard here. That's Kevin, 9307. He should be winning. And he just went ahead and started and packed. That was his game plan the whole time. Okay, current's going out, they might make the mark. They 
they might make it. They're, gonna, they're not making it, but that makes starboard sound closer to the water. So you wait longer now with the up the course current. And the book would say that the current is actually going left to right, like up the course towards the bridge there, as it bends off the shore and goes out. There's a big shoal over there off the amphibious, so the water kind of rushes that way, and then it goes out the channel that way. Harrison right there winning to the left middle here. Kevin might have understood. He did. So Kevin, again, current going out towards the bridge. He could have stayed on that starboard longer. But it's okay. He's coming around second. good throw out too and they were still in sixth through the regatta and they, so there if they can finish here second it looks like a pretty low reach totally different and there's a lot to think about but here are the marks here are the leaders having to go this high 
um, you got to know where the marks are a little bit. So maybe, I mean, if you're really skilled, I probably would have forgot it today to look for the gates before I got to the reach mark. Uh, 9308 is the only boat, I think, that's kind of sailed the right angle here. I think most other people have sailed a little too high. But he can, um, I can't believe the Borelli's there with that black and white type there. They're doing well. He probably just found the mark. So the current is going from here towards the Coronado Bridge. So that is moving that ley line even more. And you got to be crabbing into it. So, so somebody back here should be willing to go just a little lower and uh, not sail so much extra distance here. Some of these people, they have no choice. They have to stay high just to try to keep protecting their wind. But you gotta know the current also. You gotta know where the next marks are and you gotta know where the current, what the current's doing. The current going against you is going to make it, so these guys are getting lifted up away from the ley line the whole time. So they should be staying low. I mean, relatively. They're almost the perfect angle. I still think they're just going too high. As you're going downwind now, you're looking upwind. The wind is wider. The wind is not gone right. You're looking at the race committee flag, orange flag. Take a quick look at that. Now they got a windward lured windward to do. Probably would have just stayed. Oh, Kevin hit the mark. Darn. That's a bummer. Luckily, they have a gap, but you don't want to let people gain on you right now. Oh, well. Things like that happen. So, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Nine, three, oh, six, and eleven. That's a pretty good job. They still look like they, they got their bang on a little too much. You gotta read the bottom of your mainsail downwind and you just ease the bang until the bottom of the main just fills up. Okay. Light now. Good wind out there on the other side of this current line. Race one on Sunday. Looks like the orange kite's winning. And then we got our three guys over here. So this has got to be Anton and Ian, Harrison and Taylor Bartel and the Borellis. And I gotta look at Spinnaker's size here. These guys look small over here. These guys look bigger. White Spinnaker looks pretty big. I gotta think we're second, third, and fourth right now. It's it's gonna I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Eleven knots. Harrison in second, Kevin and Holland of Rocky Rock in third, and Tom and Wyatt have a great up win. They're fourth or fifth right now. They can definitely see the back of Jordan's main sail. You can see how tight Jordan's main is. I was telling some of the new teams. Gotta make sure you don't have the main way. It's like a savage, it'll start rocking all over the place and he's in death row. Wow, this is incredible. Uh, here come the Borelli's uh, at sixth here. Great job. This is gonna really, man, oh man, two more races to go. If they get another top five, I think their 29er sailing has just helped them a lot in these conditions. We're complaining. Here goes Braden in seven, eight, ten. They started the day third in the Redonna. Braden and Ben could sit forward now. It's not as crucial as in light air. Again, they're just not really adjusting their bang very much. So that's the stuff you gotta practice when you're out. Everybody needs to practice being able to steer, keep the steering very good, and then reach down and put it on. And then reach down and let it off. Just train your body through repetition how to do it. So they're an easy six. One, two, three, four, five. They're gonna come around six. Great race. This is just really good news. Garrison. Garrison had the guts to step up and just 
get away. Oh, good. These guys too, see all the overbend wrinkles and the leech is kind of stalling? They could, they could crack their bang just a little. It looks okay, it's close. That looks really good. Step forward a little in the light spots. That was a loss. No, it wasn't. It was just Kevin just gained. It was not a loss. Harrison gained on Anton. Two on Sunday, I'm very impressed. I think almost every kid in the fleet knew it was a black flag for the last start, so that's good. Sometimes reading sailing instructions and notice of races is not in a kid's nature, it's not human nature. <laughs> you can tell them all day long to know the rules. They only get upset when it impacts them negatively. That's true about adults too. They don't know, you know, they, they don't see the black flag up or something. And anyhow, don't get me started. Gotta read the rules, everybody. This is pretty good. There's a little line sag. It is lighter, much lighter, three knots lighter than it was last race. So we're down to like eight, nine knots. But if the crew's bending their knees, you need to uh, keep the main on pin. Keep it pinned. Don't even play it. If you do have to let it out in a surprise, let on it. Kevin and Holland have, you know, basically sailed right. I don't know if you can see the red life jacket right there. The gun just went out. Uh, they're winning the race right now. They just got a really high mode there with power. Race two, first windward. That's uh, Braden and Ben coming in in third, overstood, maybe fourth. That was a great set. Holy smoke, that was a good set. Yeah, so this should be a better reach this time. They knew that the mark had been moved up. Yeah, that's Braden and Ben coming in here. I don't think Braden and Ben still have a throw out. <clears throat> I think they got 11th that race or something. So they have like a four, three, five, six, eleven. Oh, good. This is oh, that's Anton. Okay. Very nice. They rounded one, two, three, four, five. Oh boy, nine, three, one, three, doing a jibe set on a course four. Goodness. 
It's not a course four, it's a course two. Oh, good, Loki. Loki and Zach. Okay, so now I get a good Borelli's there, do another decent race. So this is all good. This is all good. Um, I did not hear that they had changed the course, but it looks like everybody knew they were, that they had. So. so you've got a couple teams doing high hike mode. And you got Kevin and all. Hey, oh, they just transitioned to hike mode. Yeah, they saw the other boats trying to gap up on them, so they just went into hike mode. So that's all you say. Yeah, go ahead. You're just skipper, you're going along, you're losing Who's too much height. Who's that boat out on the right? I'm like below the lured mark right now. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, I think it's like 9703 maybe. I can't, I don't have my binoculars right now. Yeah, case on, Kevin. Oh yeah. I think it's 9308. They're staying in hike mode. So if it builds, then they go back to trap mode. But they're just doing a good job. Leech of the jibs. Yeah, leech of the jibs inside the shredder tip by an inch. The slots closed. No more than that. On side force mode. If you sail in a 29er, you learn how to sail in a very narrow group because that jib is, you know, you get a little too tight, man. You get, you get, it, it gets hard to steer to. So you, over time, you can steer to a much narrower group than this full sail. No, these guys are still high club. Sixth is Anton. Oh wait, there's the Borelli's maybe sixth. Wow, that's a good deal. They rounded 11th. And again, downwind the Borelli's have the ability to get around a lot of bad situations. People, uh, you know, almost on their wind and they just somehow, I think it's just because Maribel focuses. Oh, look at Loki and man, they might be sixth. Finally, Loki and Zach is working hard. Finally seeing some reward. Cool. Good race. They got a second to last race. You got to look at hand position younger for the tier twos. New people to the boat. Look. He's pretty small, so he can sit pretty far back. But the bigger you are, the further forward the skipper has to sit. The crew's got the pole kind of back, but not too far. Just playing the sheet way out. The clues are kind of level. Oh, he lost it right as I was watching. Look at that. That is a big lead. Here's the Borelli's right here in about fourth. This is Anton and Wyatt in fourth or fifth. Yeah, or these guys are that's, yeah, these guys are fourth. These girls are fifth. Here goes a nice rotation. Very nice. You kind of steer through the jive far enough to get on a broad reach so it'll fill. So not great, but that's alright. It'll fill right now. You just can't hold it dead downwind in this stuff. So as you're coming in here, if you're behind the leaders, your first clue of which one you're gonna round is watching the leaders go around. So if you see all three of these boats go to the same gate, you know immediately that's probably the one you're going to. And they're so close together, in this case, they're not gonna make hardly any difference at all unless they're more than 15 degrees out of whack. But. They're so close together, but if they're 30 degrees out of whack, so again, you'd be looking at the leader and going, oh, he went to the left one. That's my first clue. 
Look at the, watch the next boats go around. If they both go left, you're going left. Go into this one. The left gate looking downwind. Okay, we are gonna to try to get a look at their sails. What this team does so well together is that the crew is looking upwind a lot. Oh, there you go. Looking at the leech of the jib. He wants to make sure the leech of the jib was in the right place. He's looking at, he's, you know, he's looking around tactics. Uh, Kevin's looking around too. Kevin more looks at the other boats, right? So they get a lane, they're gonna tack, they're gonna go a little ways. And then when these guys come around, whichever buoy, then they're gonna set themselves up to be the windward of them. There you go, he's got his jib loose right now because they kind of had a crap tack. Now he's gonna pull the jib in. Yeah, they still, they don't get their topping with this back rider. <laughs> Okay, so I bet you anything you see these guys, these guys just rounded, and I bet you anything you see Kevin here go back here soon. Oh, well, yep, see they're talking tactics. Okay, what do we got? We got fourth, 9308, fifth, 9306. It's close though. She can see the back side of both of their mainsails, so she is ahead of them. Yep. race today for the last race it looks windier on the left actually there's a spinnaker come oh that's a 49er coming down the bay nine heises 49er coming down the bay mock speed the black flag is up if you look that goes down at one minute and in right there the key about the black flag is don't be sticking out whatever you do do not stick out don't want the race committee to catch you early in the sequence. Start focusing on you. Current is trickling in now. I checked the current. It's trickling in, flooding at almost nothing. So at least that should help get the starts off. 9308 Anton. Probably moved up close to the top five overall, and he's just did a good job there. He's hanging back a fraction. He got away from 1017. Yep, hanging back, hanging back. Guts, no glory, man. They didn't get black flag, so that was good. Um, but no guts, no glory. They went for it. They were right with the three top boats in the regatta, pretty much. And uh, they just didn't happen. There we go. Look at that. Kylie and August right there. Decent start. Back up to 10 knots, 11 knots. It's like Carly Keating. Just look how flat their jib is out there. I don't know if you can see it. They just got the jib smoked, and then she's just playing the main. See, now you get, you know, you're, they're at that point too where you just stop pulling the windward one and you just whale the lure one. But we're, we're, we made a commitment for the right, so we'll see what happens here. This is good. This is 12. 13. Keep hiking like crazy. Practice steering in the hiking position. Wow. This is going to be a tough one. The wind must have filled in from the left still to the right for the day, but it built. Oh, that was not Carly eating. Oh yeah, it was. She's on the right. This is uh, Paige Tilson having a little bit of race. Paige and Kristen right here. Oh, there's a 29er coming down the bay. I wonder where the 49er went. There's a yellow kite coming down. Oh, that's Julia. Wow. That's pretty gutsy. 
let's see, they come all the way down here and I still have to go 8 to 10 miles back. Yeah, don't roll tack, you guys. You gotta work on your breeze tack. You want breeze tack, you just let go of this guy. Here's the best part. Fairy regatta. We've done like no regattas together ever. Oh, your jig's twisted. That's okay. She's just got to stay out now. Yeah, she should bend her knees. But that's all right. They don't know that stuff. We haven't talked about that. We just we just, we just learned the boat handling in the last eight months. Go ahead, Ben. You want me to pull up the pin mark, then they can go. Oh wow, leather mark is way the heck up in there. First windward mark, race three. Anton and Wyatt round first. The thing they didn't remember, or maybe they didn't think about, is the current switch. So the current was pushing people into the pin, and if you really knew the, the tide, then you would have uh, accounted for that one more. It would probably have been the pin problem. But, you know, I'm not complaining here. That's a lot of information to keep straight. Even with, the, even with keeping this race, Definitely top five. Amazingly consistent. These guys were also very good at the 29er Turkey Day Regatta. I don't know if they see this guy. Yeah, they do. Jive set. Here comes Harrison in fourth. Not bad. Harrison hasn't been in a 420 in probably since June or something, or May or something. Oh, current's coming in, dude.
have a race worse than that, I believe. So this will help them because they, they get to throw out their bad race still. So those guys are probably top four or five. And it is tight. The top six are really close except for the leader. Second through six are really close. Loki in the back had a much better day today. We're getting down to our last video here. And sometimes kids think they really know it all too early in their spinnaker work. So we're gonna watch. The number one rule is, is it never lost. So sometimes I'll coach somebody and I'll tell them to do stuff and they'll uh, say something back. And then a couple minutes later, their spinnaker starts luffing. And it's like, watch this, top two teams. This, the team on the right is basically, the, was the best under 16 team for a couple years. And this guy is probably a senior in high school, super good sailor. Look, the spinnaker never lost, never lost, never lost. So number one rule, never lost. They're starting to catch waves here a little bit, right there. They're about to catch a wave. They're gonna go down and pump. Yep, yep. Fang's very loose. That's why he pulls the boom in. See, his boom's in a little bit. It's about 75, 80 degrees, 85 degrees. Yep, see, so you pump the guy, the sheet, and the, and the uh, main. There you go. Jib's too tight here, but no problem. If the jib's too tight, it'll suck wind out of the spinnaker, so be careful with that. Fang's still on. That's what's classic, is these guys are fast downwind. <laughs> Look, spinnaker never loves. It's right on the edge of loving all the time. So there we go. That looks really good. Well, they got to work extra hard downwind anyway. It's been a good regatta. Here they are. They rounded 13. Okay, so these guys hit the pin. I knew the current had changed. I'm sure they didn't. But they had they know the current had changed, they wouldn't have done it. So they hit the pin. They get stuck on the pin. They do a masterful job of heading up, backing off of the rope, start sailing, do a penalty turn, and now there are 46 boats in the fleet. They're now 11. So that's another two boats right there. So these guys are also right in the top five with a 1 2 11 today without much chance of passing. So 9307 and really good regatta. It's their first day in a 420 in about a month and a half. Okay, here's the Pirellis in 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So again, I think they have a 26th or something in one race. So this is gonna, they're gonna throw out a 26 and keep an 18. So that's again, that's an improvement. They probably feel bad right now, but that's still an improvement. At least they didn't sail a worse race than 26. Anyway, that's it. All good.